welcome back everyone, it's me Matimus. Today we are talking about pretty much my favourite fighter jet in the world other than the F-22, the F-16 Fighting Falcon. And this aircraft has had quite the history. I have done a full overview of this aircraft in the past and you can go check out that video if you wish. But today I'm going to give you a bit of a success story of the F-16 and how it has been modified to the Block 70 F-16V which is the latest variant of the very successful Lockheed Martin Fighting Falcon. So despite having made its first flight more than 45 years ago, the Lockheed Martin F-16 remains in widespread service, with more than 3,000 of the 4,588 F-16s put into service since 1978, which is still in use by 25 Air Forces today. This represents about 15% of the world's operational fighter fleets and makes the F-16 the world's most popular and widespread fighter type. It has been manufactured in the US and also Belgium, the Netherlands, South Korea and Turkey. The aircraft's performance and agility remain extremely competitive and a lightly loaded F-16 is still an extremely effective aircraft within visual range for combat, though in some other respects the aircraft is showing its age, especially with the regard to sensor performance. The fundamental soundness of its basic design makes the aircraft extremely well suited to modernization and upgrades, and there have been a number of attempts to produce modernized and improved F-16 variants and derivatives. In 1984, General Dynamics proposed the F-16 Agile Falcon as a low-cost alternative to the Advanced Tactical Fighter or ATF competition. The Agile Falcon featured 25% larger wing, an uprated engine, and some of the improvements that were then being developed for the basic F-16. Though the Agile Falcon lost out to the F-22, some of its capabilities were incorporated into the F-16 C and D Block 40 variants, with the Agile Falcon's big wing also going into the influence of Japan's Mitsubishi F-2 fighter. At broadly the same time, the even more radically redesigned cranked Delta Wing tailless F-16 XL was offered for the Enhanced Tactical Fighter Program, losing out to the beautiful F-15E Strike Eagle which I've also done a video on in 1984. The similar F-16X Falcon 2000 proposed in 1993 featured a wing based on that of the F-22 and spawned the F-16U offered to the United Arab Emirates. It became apparent that radical airframe design was not going to be cost effective and the tension was switched more to the modest upgrade configuration that tended to retain the same basic outline of the mold line of the aircraft of the F-16D and C but incorporating new sensors and systems. The F-16ES, or Enhanced Strategic Variant, was an extended range aircraft of the F-16 C and D, intended to be fitted with a low drag internal targeting system based on the low altitude navigation and targeting infrared system for nighttime operations. The aircraft also had provision for conformal fuel tanks, or CFTs, that conferred to a 40% improvement in range compared to that of the standard Block 50. The F-16ES was offered to Israel as an alternative to the F-15L in late 1993 and led to the development of the game-changing Block 60 F-16 ENF for the UAE. Then came along the Desert Falcon with its liquid-cooled AN-APG-80 Active Electronically Scanned Array or AESA radar, the all-new electronic warfare system and a more powerful General Electric F-110 GE-132 engine and an embedded targeted forward-looking infrared system or FLIR, as well as a massive improvement in computer power, the Block 60 Desert Falcon was the most advanced and most capable F-16 ever fielded when it entered service in 2005. Some maintain that it retains this status even to this day. Remarkably, the UAE was destined to remain the sole customer for the Block 60 despite its advantage and advanced capabilities. This was due to part of the US fears that the Block 60 could cannibalize sales for the new F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. And in part because changes to US export regulations quickly rendered many of the F-16 ENF's systems completely unexportable. This derailed a Lockheed Martin bid to offer the Block 60 to Singapore, while bids to offer similar aircraft to India, the Block 60 based on the F-16IN, and Brazil, the so-called Block 60 Plus or F-16BR Super Viper, came to nothing. The aircraft offered to India for the Medium Multi-Role Combat Aircraft or MMRCA competition and showcased at the 2009 Aero India Air Show was known as the Block 7072 F-16IN Super Viper. But this was an unbuilt variant, bore no real resemblance to today's Block 70 F-16V. Incredibly, even the UAE was unable to receive 30 extra new Block 61 F-16EFs when it requested them in 2014, and this effectively ended efforts to the market versions based on the Desert Falcon. 
The United States Air Force's determination to move an all-stealth combat aircraft fleet killed any chance of the Block 60s at home. Indeed, the last of the 2,231 F-16s for the Air Force delivered in March 2005 was a Block 52 aircraft. Delays in Lockheed Martin's F-35 program prevented it from simply and directly replacing the F-16 according to the original planned timescale. This forced the United States Air Force to launch a project to keep some 300 to 400 of its Fighting Falcons in service for rather longer than had been originally intended. This, it was hoped, would allow the United States Air Force to maintain its force structure, augmenting the slow-growing F-35 force and providing a new baseline for any F-16 upgrade configurations. The United States Air Force F-16 upgrade required a twin-track approach with structural SLEP or Service Life Extension Program and CAPES or Combat Avionics Programmed Extension Suite upgrade to keep the aircraft operationally viable while the additional new capabilities and by enhancing survivability of combat effectiveness was put into place. The upgraded aircraft were to be drawn from the United States Air Force's fleet of about 640 Block 40, 42, 50 and 52 F-16Cs and the F-16Ds including active duty Air National Guard and Reserve squadrons. Under its plans, the United States Air Force would operate some of its fleet of Block 40 and 52 F-16 aircraft out to 2048 and beyond. The F-16 SLEP was intended to extend the F-16's airframe life from 8,000 hours to 12,000 hours, thereby adding 8 to 10 years of extra service life to each airframe. This part of the project is going ahead very well with some aircraft expected to receive replacement wings or perhaps just the upper wing skins and associated fittings, while much of the aircraft's external skins will be replaced together with some airframe structure. CAPES was there to be seen as an integration of the new AESA radar, a Terma AN-ALQ-213 electronic warfare system, an integrated broadcast system or IBS, and a center display unit or CDU together with the new supporting operational flight program software. The IBS promised to allow the F-16 pilot a new degree of data fusion, correlating information from the aircraft's own sensors and offboard data from a data link and presenting these in a single coherent display, with the new CDU providing a high resolution screen for the IBS, synthetic aperture radar maps and video from targeting pods. The automated AN-ALQ-213 electronic warfare suite promised to reduce the pilot's workload providing a greatly improved machine interface. The new primary sensors as the CAPES AESA promised to deliver a significant improvement in performance especially in terms of track accuracy, which impact on the long range missile effectiveness and kill probability. In the medium term, the AESA also offers a great potential as a data link for electronic attack and non-kinetic effect. Because an ESA radar has no moving parts, it is also promising a step change in reliability, while the fact that up to 20% of the transmitter and receiver elements can fail without significantly affecting performance, and production radars could last for the lifetime of the aircraft, or even twice the lifetime, without repairs or perhaps even any major maintenance. The F-16 radar retrofit package was designed so that a no Group A structural wiring modification would be required for the aircraft. The upgraded radar therefore included its own liquid cooling heat exchanger and fit within the same available space using the same radar. Northrop Grumman supplied the F-16s with mechanically scanned AN-APG-68 radars as well as the AN-APG-80 AESA of the Block 60s. It offered an AN-APG-83 Acer for the F-16 upgrades and new variants, also known as the Scalable Agile Beam Radar or SABR. The APG-83 was developed from the F-35's AN-APG-81 and it was designed as a drop-in replacement for existing F-16 radars. But Northrop Grumman's dominance in the F-16 radars was challenged by Raytheon which offered a scaled-down version of the Super Hornet's AN-APG-79. Initially known Raytheon Next Generation Radar, the AN-APG-84 became the RACR or Raytheon Advanced Combat Radar. The RACR used a many aspect of architecture and active technologies of the AN-APG-79 and the modernized F-15E Strike Eagle's AN-APG-82. Now, CAPES was cancelled on cost grounds in 2014, however, in the process Lockheed Martin selected Northrop Grumman SABR for the United States Air Force upgrade work with the ASA forming the basis for its upgrade for Taiwan which became the F-16V. 
Meanwhile, in March 2015, the Air Force Life Cycle Management Center released a sources sought notice to contractors for a development production effort to replace the APG-68 radars of some F-16 C and Ds, particularly those of the Air National Guard flying the aerospace control alert missions. The F-16Ds from Edwards Air Force Base were used as testbeds for the F-16 radar modernization program, flying with both SABR and RACR. In June 2017, the United States Air Force selected the AN-APG-83 for a radar upgrade for the 72 US ANG F-16s to meet the US Northern Command Joint Emergent Operational Need for the Homeland Defense role. Eventually, the United States Air Force hopes to upgrade 372 F-16 aircraft with the AN-APG-83 radar. Eventually, though, the F-16V started to take shape in its modernized format. Having abandoned a plan to upgrade by BA Systems, in December 2015, South Korea selected Lockheed Martin to undertake its KF-16 upgrade project and also switched to the SABR radar. This brought the Korean upgrade into line with Lockheed's upgrade for the Republic of China's Air Force 144 Block 20 F-16A and Bs. Though notionally A and B models, Taiwan's F-16s were built to the same midlife upgrade standard as the improved configuration implemented by Belgium, Denmark, the Netherlands and Norway, as well as Portugal, Jordan and Pakistan. This includes a Texas Instruments Modular Mission Computer, or MMC, an upgraded radar processor, an ANAPX113 Advanced Identification Friend or Foe System, and new displays, including a GEC Marconi Avionics Wide Angle Conventional Head Up Display. All this brought the MLU and Taiwan's Block 20s to broadly the same standard of the United States Air Force Block 50 F 16 CNDs. The Taiwanese upgrade was similar to that planned for the United States Air Force's F-16s with an SABR radar rather than the RACR, as well as a new CDU, an upgraded mission computer and architecture, and an automatic ground collision avoidance system. A formal request for Taiwan's F-16 upgrade was issued and approved in 2011. Two aircraft, the first single-seater and the first twin-sticker, had been retained at Edwards for Air Force testing and trials, and these were converted to service prototypes for the upgrade. Before they could either fly, Lockheed announced the F-16V, or Viper, the F-16's informal nickname, as the 2012 Singapore Air Show announcement. This being the designation upgraded aircraft at its standard, while aircraft built to the new standard were officially dubbed Block 70 or Block 72, depending on the engine choice. The first prototype made its inaugural flight in its new configuration with the SABR radar and the F-100 PW229 engine in October 16, 2015, and the in-country upgrade of Taiwan's remaining fleet started in January 2017. The first of an initial batch of four ROCAF F-16 Alpha Bravos upgraded to F-16V standards by the state-owned Aerospace Industrial Development Corporation was re-delivered to the Air Force's fourth tactical fighter wing in late October 2018. The $5.3 billion Phoenix Rising program is expected to run until the year 2023, with the AIDC converting 24 aircraft per year. The new build Vipers were constructed on February 27, 2019, where Taiwan requested a $13 billion purchase of 66 new build F-16V Block 70-72 airframes to replace the aging F-5Es and Mirage 2000s and to augment the 144 converted F-16V aircraft. The US has actually approved this now and it's one of the largest single arms package transactions between the US and Taiwan. However, the first customer of the new Block 70 was the Kingdom of Bahrain. Bahrain gained US State Department approval for the FMS of 19 new Block 70 F-16Vs, with the conversion of 20 surviving Block 40 F-16CDs to the F-16V standard in September 2017. But when the order was placed in June 2018, it was just for 16 new Block 70 F-16Vs at a reported cost of 3.8 billion US dollars. This would be built on Lockheed Martin's new F-16 production line in Greenville, South Carolina. The company has closed its original F-16 line in Fort Worth to free up space for the accelerating F-35 production program. In October 2017, the US approved the sale of 123 F-16V modification kits to Greece to allow the Hellenic Air Force to bring some of the 154 surviving Block 30, 50 and 52 and 52 plus advanced fighters to the new F-16V standard. 
with the aim of improving operational capability and extending their service lives through to 2048. Financial constraints meant that Greece decided to upgrade just 85 aircraft when it announced that it would proceed with the upgrade in April 2018. When the contract was announced in December 2018, it was for the upgrade of 84 F-16 CDs to the latest F-16V standard, with work to be completed by June 30th, 2027. The first two aircraft will be upgraded by Lockheed Martin in the US, with the remainder being upgraded by the Hellenic Aircraft Industry at Tangara. The 85 aircraft total represents the surviving Block 52 and Block 52M aircraft which will donate some of their existing equipment to a more modest upgrade for the surviving Block 30 and Block 50 aircraft. In April 2018, the US State Department approved an estimated $1.8 billion sale of 14 F-16Vs with a package of spares, support equipment, munitions, training and a two-year logistical support package to Slovakia. The contract was signed in the capital of Bratislava on December 12, 2018. This represented Slovakia's largest ever military purchase. The first four F-16 jets would be delivered in 2022, with deliveries to be completed by January 31st, 2024. The aircraft will comprise of 12 single-seaters and a pair of two-seat trainers, while the training package will cover the tuition of 22 pilots and more than 150 maintainers. Lockheed Martin scored another win in Central Europe in December 2018, when Bulgaria signed up for eight F-16Vs in a $1.3 billion package deal, which also includes weapons, training and the support. The US State Department approved the Bulgarian purchase on July 10th, 2019, and the Bulgarian Parliament ratified the F-16 purchase in a fast-track procedure. However, the high cost of the purchase triggered heated debate. Unfortunately, the deal was vetoed, and citing lack of national consensus, there was further debate that ensued from the Bulgarian Parliament's Defence Committee, which overturned the presidential veto and confirmed its intention to proceed with the acquisition of six F-16C Block 70 single-seaters and two F-16D Block 72 seaters However, the F-16V, as both a new build and upgrade, is on a roll. On March 25th, 2019, the US Department of Defense announced approvals for two F-16V FMS deals to Morocco, one valued at $985.2 million and covered the upgrade of 23 surviving Block 52 F-16Cs and F-16Ds to the F-16V configuration, while the second, valued at $3.7 billion, covered a batch of 25 new Block 72 airframes and 29 new engines a package of precision guided munitions and training to knock it all together. The Block 60 based F-16IN lost out on India's MMRCA competition, despite the offer of local production. But after India's Rafale order was cut back to 126 aircraft to just 36, Lockheed began marketing the new Block 70 to augment the Rafale and to replace the Indian Air Force's aging MiG-21s and MiG-27s. Lockheed Martin agreed to sign a letter of intent with Tata Advanced Systems Limited to manufacture the jets in India if the bid was successful, and to allow India to export F-16s from its production line. In February 2019, Lockheed Martin unveiled a new F-21 concept at the Aero India Air Show. The F-21 is a Block 70-72 F-16V with a single large area cockpit display with a triple rail AIM-120 AMRAAM or Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air Missile Launcher and conformal fuel tanks featuring an integrated retractable probe and refueling probe, and will be built with the collaboration with Tata Advanced Systems. The F-16V is proving to be a formidable offering on the current market when it comes to medium fighters. It is won in many competitions, particularly in Central Europe, when other contenders seem to be in strong positions. It underscores the perceived importance of maintaining relations with the US while also underscoring the capabilities of the F-16 some 45 years on from its very first flight. Well, there you have it everyone, the F-16V and how it's really starting to hit the markets very, very well and how the upgrades aren't really huge. I mean, there's not a massive change to the aircraft itself, but it goes to prove how good the F-16 is as what it can do. I've always loved the F-16 ever since I was a little boy. You know, in my previous video that I've actually discussed in the F-16 will dictate everything about its specifications and what it can do specifically. But I was really fascinated by how much this aircraft was being capitalized on and how much it's going to get sort of pushed into the modern spectrum of fighter jets out there with just some strap-on additions and some additions to radar and avionics and, you know, even just cockpit displays. 
they're pretty important to a pilot and remember that anything that reduces the pilot's workload is pretty substantial. The F-16 is a gorgeous aircraft and when you start putting all these fancy things all over it, it looks even more technologically advanced and sexy. But the basis is that the fighter is just good at what it does, and it's not going to continue getting upgraded if it's not good at what it does. Lockheed Martin really has gone to town when it comes to sort of, you know, marketing this thing to many nations around the world, and it's very interesting to see. I just want to remind you all that I am not a subject matter expert, and if I did get anything wrong in today's video, please feel free to correct me in the comment section below. I really appreciate everyone stopping by on today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, feel free to leave me a like if you did enjoy it, and if you want to be notified of any upcoming content in the future, please hit the little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified next time. I appreciate everyone who's also been contributing and supporting donations towards my Patreon page and my CVRT crowdfund that I have going right now. Really, really cannot thank you it just it means so so very much to me so thank you everyone for doing so and i hope to see you again on the next video everyone all the best bye bye